first and foremost, I uh, want to uh, appreciate all you folks coming out. And um, I've been through a couple of these with Coach G and, and tapped in, and um, guys have done a great job. So just hoping you guys get something out of it. And if not, um, I'll put my, my stuff on here, my Twitter and my email and all that stuff so you guys can tap in and we'll, we'll learn something else at the end of the day. Um, Big, big shout out to Coach G for, for throwing this on, obviously, during this, this quarantine time, these trying times. It's been a tough situation, but it's a great time for us as coaches to get better. Um, and and I've, I've done my best to do that, and hopefully you guys have done the same. Uh, obviously, hope all is well. Uh, and hope everybody's safe, family safe. Uh, let's, let's, let's get to talking some ball. So I'm an open book, man. Any questions uh, right now during this deal or, or after? Uh, just hit me up and, or let me know in here and, and let's get this thing going. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my philosophy. I'm not going to dive too deep into that because I, I do miss football. I do want to get into some ball talk early. Um, and then I'm going to I'm going to talk some press, man. And from there, if we want to go into some off, I can pull up some off or some catch or something like that. And we can roll from there. Okay. Just need to get going. Got a dog. What are we doing here? Chuck, should move, should move a little faster than that as we go, hopefully. Uh, but you're just talking about philosophy in general. Um, for me, it all starts with a mentality, and really that's, that's anything in life. Um, so I take it kind of the same way that I would with, uh, with the way that I, I run my life. So uh, day in and day out, I try to preach. I try to preach some type of mentality, some gritty, gritty type of mentality, and really it starts from the top down. So it starts with me, and then I rely on my leaders in the group, um, and, and then we roll from there. So anything that can rub off, I hope it rubs off to, to, to our guys day in and day out. Mentality wise, when I, when I say that, I'm talking about attack or be attacked. We're, we're going to go after dudes. We're going to set the tone. We're going to be the aggressor. And I think as, as a DB coach, I teach my techniques that way. And when I talk to our DC, he calls the game that way. So we want to we want to be the attacker. We don't want offenses to attack us. We want to attack the ass. Okay, I always say confidence over arrogance. Um, I love guys that are confident, but I hate me guys. Can't, I can't stand me guys, guys that are posting their practice highlights every other day, um, guys that, that aren't for the team. So uh, I enjoy confident kids, but I can't stand me guys. So that's one thing that we harp on. Um, we won't win them all, but we can't lose being soft, period. Okay? When I'm talking about going into a fight, if I'm going into a fight, I'm not going to lose without throwing them from the shoulders. So we're going to have to throw hands when we get to Fridays and Saturdays. Fridays for you guys, a lot of you guys, and Saturdays for us college guys. Uh, we're, we're not going to go down without swinging. So like I'm saying, with our techniques, we'll teach our techniques the same way. They'll be attacking type of techniques. Uh, um, just talking about DBs in general for us, man, when we, when we recruit or when we talk to our guys, we got to be able to tackle. we got to be able to defend the deep ball, and then we we got to be disciplined, Okay, We can't give up freebies, free touchdowns. Um, three touchdowns will get you fired. Okay, so moving on, uh, diving into some pre-snap progression. So getting into the actual football piece of it, really for, and this isn't just man, this is just uh, all of our calls. This is pre-snap all day, every day. So we talk situation first and foremost. Uh, is it first down? Is it third and three? Uh, sticks wise, uh, we talk time of the game. Is it a two minute drill? Is it sudden change or expected shots? Um, that's the first thing that we're, we're we're really dialed in on is the situation. We go from situation to formation. Whether you're a corner, nickel, safety, whatever it may be, I like to take a picture. I like our guys to take take a picture of the formation, understanding that um, when you get into those game plan keys, there's a lot of things that you can get before the ball is even snapped. So. Um, that also goes hand in hand with splits, right? When you're talking about splits, you're not just talking about your guy, right? You're talking about the number two receiver or the number three receiver or the running back. How tight are our guys to the line of scrimmage or how tight are our, are our guys to each other? Um, we don't do a ton of the, 
uh, divider rules and stuff like that because um, I think you can get screwed in some situations um, and I have been screwed in, in some situations so I kind of took that off and kind of did more of the take a picture and understand where your help is at how close is your help um, and we kind of rolled from there in that sense um, and then game plan keys motions uh, shift alerts is the number two receiver three yards off the ball as opposed to a yard off the ball like he usually is he's motioning um, we do a lot of Toby stuff. Our Toby, we call our uh, Y offs, the tight end off the ball. We call him a Toby. So we do a lot of studying on those guys. Um, how far off is he off the ball? Um, is he tight to that tackle? Meaning he's going to come down and see like a power type of look or something like that. Um, is he looking across the line of scrimmage? Meaning that he's going to go across on some type of uh, cut scheme, something like that. Um, so that, that's the four things that we're picking up we're looking at. Okay, going into uh, just some fundamentals, right? The, the things that, that we harp on here, everyday type of deals are gonna be uh, stance, alignment. Um, alignment, obviously there's, there's gonna be leverage with that as well. And then the three things that are outside of those two things that are, that are non-negotiable, easy, anybody could do them, bad athlete, good athlete, whatever it may be, eyes, feet, finish. Those are, those are three things that I really harp on for our guys, eyes, feet, finish. And then I'll go into uh, all five of these a little bit more here right now. Okay, so stance-wise, um, everybody's going to be different based on body types, um, based on who the kid is. But as a base, man, feet square, talking press right now, we can go over we can go over all stuff if we want have to, after. Um, talking feet square, slightly outside of shoulder width, um, again, some kids are going to be different, but I want slightly outside of shoulder width. Weight on the ball of your feet, usually somewhere around that 60 40. Got to stay off your heels. Comfortable bend at the knees. Um, shoulder forward, arms relaxed, right? And I think I'm going to change that this year. I've seen some things that have uh, made me think that maybe having your arms up is a little bit. A little bit better, but when I was a player, a lot of this, a lot of stuff I teach is based on experience. Uh, and when I was a player, it wasn't it wasn't comfortable. But I think comfort comes from um, doing it more. So that may be something that I implement going forward. Okay? But most importantly, man, your stance at the end of the day has got to promote quick and strength, change of direction, and and definitely balance. So diving into uh, diving into alignment. Pretty simple, man. It, guys that can't get a line can't play. It, it, it's pretty simple. And if you see that at the bottom, I'm sure a lot of you guys got some of the same stuff, like corners over, um, are we locking motion, rocking motions, whatever it may be. If you can't get aligned, you're getting back to those, that, those discipline factors, right? You're giving up freebies. And the last thing that we can do is give up freebies. So if you can't get aligned, you can't play, period. Okay? Furthermore, when we're talking alignment, okay, we got to dig deep into leverage. Where's our leverage as a defense, whether it's tackling, whether it's uh, getting lined up, whatever it may be, but we call ourselves a leverage team. So we're always going to be, our, our leverage is always going to be determined by the following. Okay? Defensive play call, where's your help? Outside, inside, whatever it may be. Splits and spacing like we talked about. Um, again, more of a field thing than a uh, head coach. He was two yards inside the numbers because you look back at film and he was actually three yards or four yards inside. So more of a field thing than anything. And then uh, at the end of the day, film study will tell us a lot, right? If we got it, we had to face a team this year where um, if it was what we call spread two by two open, okay, back to the field. If the number two receiver was on the hash, he ran a slant every single time, right? So we'll start to cheat some things based on splits or based on film study, I should say. Okay, diving into the leverage piece of it. So we'll always challenge the receiver with our alignment, right? Um, if we're gonna be inside leverage, it's rare that we'll be heavy inside leverage, rare. And I'm talking um, when we're playing two man, we're playing some type of trail, yeah, we'll play heavy inside leverage. Or um, if we're to the field, we'll play heavy inside leverage, but to the field, I like to play a lot of off as opposed to, to the boundary playing. Um, playing press. So a lot of the time when we're in some type of situation, say we're in cover four, we'll damn near line head up on the receiver. If you look at this guy, these are our two best alignments. If you look at this guy on the left, 
he's damn near splitting the crotch, which is almost head up of this receiver. And then when he gets into the technique that we work, he takes that step. It's going to take him to about head up, right? And we're all about challenging the receiver, making the receiver go around us at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Now to the right, we're a match three base defense, okay? So to the boundary, a lot of times we're going to play outside leverage. So we say nose on the inside eye for my man on the left, said we were in cover four, which we'll do if we're playing some type of uh, offense with a good uh, quarterback that can run the rock. Uh, but as a base to the right here, we'll look a lot of times like this and we'll, and we harp on taking away the fade, taking away the fade. We got help inside, we'll take away the fade. So those are our two base alignments, nose on the outside shoulder and nose on the inside eye. The technique that we work, man, the technique that we work, learn this from the guy who recruited me uh, at Eastern Washington. He ended up going to Idaho, and now he's a, now he's a scout for, uh, I want to say it's Edmonton or, or the BC Lions. Tory Hunter was a, a Wazoo grad and a third-round draft pick, but a great dude, and he taught me a lot in a year and a half that I was with him, uh, and we stay in constant communication. But pure step, okay, so for us, our eyes are going to be anywhere from the belt buckle to the belly button. Uh, and that, that this piece right here, man, when we talk about lock in, I talk about sniper focus, it, it's mandatory. And, and that's why I love this technique is because it doesn't let you take plays off. Every single snap, you have to be locked in. You got to be focused. You got to be ready to roll. If not, you're going to catch a lot of receivers catch, touching their head on the, on the goalpost. So um, at the end of the day, it's something where you have to have the right mindset. You have to have the right mentality. You have to have the confidence to be locked in and to get going. Okay? So there's no given ground with this technique. Um, it's going to start off with the six inch activation step and it's going to be with your leverage foot. Okay? So I'll show you guys some film of that, what I mean by that. For inside leverage, we're going to step to the receiver. For outside leverage, we're going to step to the receiver. Okay? So we activate that, that six inch and it can be anywhere from five to seven inch, inches based on uh, how long your DB is right or how wide is wide or tight his stance is okay so once that receiver declares okay, we're going to step or place and we're going to try to stay square as long as possible um and match his release right we're going to try to get body on body bone on bone with that receiver okay add hands when you got feet right i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell guys to shoot hands right away I'm going to add hands when I got feet. So if we're good with our eyes and our feet, and I preach eyes and feet all day, if we're good with our eyes and feet, then we can add our hands, right? And a lot of the times it's based on the receiver's release. So if we get a guy coming down our frame, we feel good about two, putting two hands on him, getting to one right now. As soon as we get two, we know as soon as he declares right or left, that two is going to go to one right away. And we're going to get out of getting our, uh, our hips locked at that situation, okay? When we do get one, we get the releases where we're about a half man, either inside or outside. We'll get one hand, obviously our off hand at that situation, okay? And in those scenarios, we gotta be violent. We wanna talk thumb up, not stop sign. That's terrible. We're not gonna get a lot of power from that. We'll talk thumb up and get inside of that peck, inside of that armpit region right here, okay? And then one thing that we gotta be better at is the counter punch. When we do shoot to the left, and he actually goes away from us, we got to be able to counterpunch that thing faster than we have in the past. Common mishaps for this uh, technique, this pier step technique, is going to be hopping at the line of scrimmage as, a, as opposed to one step, you're getting guys that are jumping off of both steps, and that's bad business. Obviously, nobody wants to be off two feet um, when you're playing football. Uh, guys on their heels, right, they'll take their activation step, and then they'll end up on your heels, your knee. Football is bad if you're playing on your heels. Obviously, you want to play on the balls of our feet and then opening the gate, right? A lot of guys will take that step, feel like the receivers threaten them right now, and then they'll open the gate, and it's bad news bears. Okay? So we want to stay away from that. Got a question here, Coach. What you got, babe? Uh, what are you telling your DBs, uh, your DBs with their hands, uh, where their hands should be uh, in their stance when they're pressed? So right now, as a base, we've just been relaxed. Right, we've been we've been arms down, but that's the one thing that I had the asterisk next to, uh, potentially putting our hands up and really getting those things going. I think we'll be better uh, at actually using them if we get them up. So uh, a lot of that is dependent on what type of guys you got. I mean, the shorter arm guys they're going to struggle if their arms are down. The longer arm guys they'll get their arms up, they'll they'll get hands on, and I got some clips of it. Uh, but as a base right now, their their arms have been down. I think I'm gonna. 
I'm going to look more into that and I'm going to talk to some guys, continue to talk to guys and continue to learn. Uh, Cause I do think hands up. I think there is some, there is some stuff to that. And there's one more here, coach. Uh, yep. act activation step is a vertical step into the wide receiver or is it a horizontal step to the leverage side? Yep. It's lateral. It's lateral. Okay. So I got some film on it and, and I got some, some endos, some drills and stuff like that, but it's going to be lateral as opposed to vertical. So if you look at prime right here, um, he's going to take that left foot and he's going to put it six inches to his left and he's stepping to Jay Rice right here. Okay. So we got some film on it. We'll, we'll, we'll get rolling on that here in a minute. Um, four of the key points to this technique is number one, being confident. Um, very similar to, to the way that we teach catch technique here, but you got to be confident. That's mandatory. No confidence. You got to sit on the sideline. Um, and then we talk the activation step and then the reaction steps, the, the step or place after that. And then again, always going to have some type of finished implemented into it. All right, I'll go pretty quick through this, but outside receiver to route tree, uh, I like to teach guys what dudes are doing. Anywhere from that three to six yard window, you're getting the three steps, the RPO routes, kind of put it from, from top down, the most common uh, slant, a hitch, a speed out. And then if you're talking to the field, you will get some five yard ends. Um, so when we are playing ball, right, when we're in that three to six region, we know what to look for. There's that short, shorter route zone. And then we get to the intermediate route zone where um, obviously the fade is going to be highlighted. It's going to be bigger because that's the route that we have to take care of. We got to take care of the big plays, take away the big plays. A lot of the time you're going to win a lot of ball games. Um, the post, if we were a cover four team, that post would be just as big as that fade, right? And when, when I do teach cover four, it is as big as that fade. But the fact that we play a ton of match three, uh, Rip Liz, as a lot of guys will call it, um, we have a post player, so the post is not a big deal for us. And then you got comeback, dig, curl. So around that 10 to 12, what we call the intermediate route zone, be ready to sink them hips, be ready to roll off of wide receiver indicators. But got to take away the fade first and foremost. Okay, looking at uh, slot receiver routes, again, same thing. You're getting a slant, you're getting a hitch, you're getting a speed out in the three-step RPO. A lot of the times the one that you're going to have to take care of is that slant with some of the RPO stuff. Um, and we play a lot of catch to that stuff. But um, the biggest route for, again, is it's taking away that slot fade, which everybody knows about. Um, we talk about playing breaking points and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll dive more into that as we go. Slot fade, corner, dig, and deep out. I think that's big, just teaching your guys what you're going to get, especially at different parts of the, of the field. I think that six to eight region, a lot of the times, what I call a dead zone, is where you're going to get a lot of double moves and stuff like that. So we shouldn't be fighting on routes in that, in that situation. So just a, just a daily drill that we do. This is every single day. The guys will be doing this before I even get out there. All it is is step, step, replace, right? Step, step, replace. It's, it's, it's a track right type of situation. One, one, two, one, one, two, right? We would get into the hinge and stuff like that. But I want to teach guys to stay square as possible. And I want to overdo the hell out of it. I want to over teach the hell out of staying square, staying square, staying square. So light feet, step, step replaces some, I got some Cal Poly stuff on here as well. Get into, get, get into them a little bit, see how good their balance is, see how strong they're playing. Same thing, bring it back. Takes 45 seconds for them to go down and back. But it's a, it's a daily drill that teaches guys step, step replace. And a lot of the times, man, when guys teach this technique, they don't, they don't drill, they don't drill things enough because they, they, some of that stuff seems easy, but in order for you to really get it down, just even this, the six inch step, in order for you to really get that thing down, you got to continuously do it to build that, that, that muscle memory for these kids. Okay. So then we'll go inside release, outside release. I'm just going to clap to activate them. And then I'm going to bring right or left to uh, step or place, right? And we're still working step, step or place. Then they'll, we'll bring them on an inside release step. So this is this is saying that I'm the receiver and let's say seven right here. Both guys will be inside the leverage. So they're stepping with their left foot, step, step or place. All right, same thing. It should look, it should look beautiful, right? They should be both on the same page. If you look right here, step together, bring it here together. Step here. Step replace there. Done deal. 
Got it. Now we put it all together because there is three parts to it, right? We're going to activate our step. We're going to react with the step in place. And then we're going to have to finish with some type of hinge. At some point, the receiver is going to get vertical. And a lot of times when you work this, uh, this technique, the release that you're going to get, you're taking away receiver's tool bags. You can, you can guarantee that. The release that you're going to get is a speed release. They're going to try to get out of there in a hurry. So a lot of times this technique gets rolling. What we're about to see right here, the three part of it, this gets rolling pretty goddamn quick. So you're talking about step, 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 replace, and then we're out of there at a 45 degree angle, right? Same thing here, inside release, we're stepping and some of these guys are, are cheating the drill. But if you look at the guy in the middle, he's stepping, step, replace, and coming back, eyes down, here we go. All right, then you just put them together. Now we're talking, and this is where you gotta you gotta harp on, you gotta hammer on, doing the right thing, step, step, replace, get it in the armpit. Obviously, it's gonna be easier here than it is with the receivers, but again, thumb up, be violent, play ball. Okay, we're stepping to the receiver. All this is is outside releases. You'll be able to tell how confident a guy is at the line of scrimmage just based on his first step. Okay, got to match the inside release. The biggest, one of the bigger things is, is you got to tell guys and make sure guys understand that they can still win on slants with outside leverage or head up leverage. It, it, it's, it's no question, right? We play a bunch of releases. If we get an inside release when we're head up or we're outside, we're thinking inside route. Now, when we start going into this, inside releases stack is going to tell you a fade. Inside release, then he tries to stack you. We're going to play the outside hip and we're going to play ball through that guy's outside arm. And again, you play press to disrupt timing. So it's going to be a tough throw. Inside, inside release fades are one of the toughest throws for, for quarterbacks and receivers to put together. Yeah, so just right here, there's a counter punch there. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this. Just put the bag behind him, right? This is, again, this is EDDs for us too. Um, we don't we don't necessarily put the bag there, but this is fall camp. All they're doing is step, step, replace, activate. Don't got to go too hard. We're about probably going 80% here. Receivers don't got to give them a horrible look. But again, we're working step, replace, step, replace, step, replace, independent feet as much as possible. Independent feet as much as possible. Two feet off the ground is not going to get the job done. Okay. And then I like working. Um, I like working with the corners and the stages and stuff like that, but I like working catch stuff, right? Because if you can do it from five yards, you can do it from the line of scrimmage. There's, there's no question because it is harder. I played safety, and I know for a fact it's harder to play catch than it is to play press. So we just work on staying square, staying in front of guys. Don't got to use your hands, right? We just want to take the crossovers out. We want to match our base with the receiver's base. Okay, so here he is, 20, matching his base on this guy. And I would like these guys to just start square. They're starting with inside leg at back, but just start square and again, just work your feet with the receiver's feet. Match, match, match. A pretty good job here. Again, we want to take away this crossover right here and make that thing square to a punch. Got a question here, Coach. Uh, <clears throat> is there a way to cut down on the hopping uh, that his younger guys do? Uh, yeah, I think that is that is part of what we what we what we work on daily, right? That first drill that we did, you have to, you have to, you have to harp on independent feet. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, as much as possible. Because again, at the end of the day, it looks so goddamn easy. It looks so easy when you do it and you just line up and you're there's no receiver there. It looks easy right now too, but then when you line those those all conference receivers against you. Now you're talking real ball. So as much as you can, you have to implement the little things. We'll get on the ladders as well. I don't have the ladder drill on here too, but if you put the ladders, uh, we got the double ladders. If you put the double ladders together and you go one, one, two through it, one, one, two back through it, I think that's a great way to do it as well. So as much as possible, just harp on the little things like anything else. Um, getting away from that hopping is, is tough, but you got to tell guys their strengths and their weaknesses. Because a lot of the times when, when people are hopping, it's that one or two guys that are doing it. This is one of our better players right here. He's a freshman All-American right here. Salty. Right? He's stepping down. He's playing big. There you go. Right back into it. Playing square. Here we go. But I like to, like I said, I like turning, turning that press into a catch type of deal. 
and just letting you guys understand that it's the same deal. It's just five yards off, right? Same deal here, Cal Poly. All we're doing is working, staying square, staying in front of those guys, having the receiver step on his toes and either break left or break right to get around him. Basketball. Okay. So getting into true releases. So now we're talking when, when things are getting real. Because we got we got real life receivers here, not not the slapstick. So first and foremost, I don't like this guy's alignment. This is a this is a safety for us. And this was this was my first year here. This is fall camp. So uh, it took a little bit for these guys to get it. We don't work a bunch of techniques because I'm a firm believer in getting great at something before you move on to the next thing. So we work tier step to to from the morning to the afternoon to night, man, done deal. And we'll talk about some change ups as we go, but we got to get great at one thing before we move on to the next. So right here, just like we talked about, right? You take a step, you open a gate, done deal. See ya. Cancel Christmas, right? And a lot of the times, if you're going to align too far inside, you're going to you're going to get a speed release and you're going to turn it into a track meet. That's what we want to take away from this. The hell with track meets, right? We're going to align damn near head up and we're going to make this guy go right or left right now. Right here you go. Better alignment right here. And this kid, this is a freshman right here. He's got probably a little bit, more, a little bit more length than the last guy, but he's taking his step. He's pretty confident. Okay, replace. Now he's soft with his hands, right? Super soft with his hand. We got to get a punch, man. We got to play ball. If we really strike this guy right here, this is a done deal. And the way that I teach it, if we're talking, if we continue to go right here, the way that I teach is we play every route from the top down on the outside. So what I mean by the top down is this guy right now is about head up. We play routes from the top down, take away the fade. We'll look down, down through the hip and we'll react to everything else. Uh, and you guys will see some clips of that as we go. So again, freshman kid right here, he takes a step, he's way too wide. There's too much going on with that step. You see how he picks it up, right? We want to be lighter, we want to be softer than that. Okay, it's a nice job. Kid doesn't declare, he comes back. Both feet are off the ground, we got to take that away. We gotta take the both feet off the ground. And again, this this isn't gonna work right here with the hands. We we got we gotta really strike this guy's armpit, and that's gonna put us in a great position. Right here, he's pretty tight. See, this guy's this guy's a little bit smaller, um, and his wide isn't at or his stance isn't as wide. His step is is probably he probably takes a four-inch step, um, but he plays pretty confident. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change a ton of it. He sits in there now. This receiver isn't great. We get two hands on. Hey, we got to get to one right now. Because a good receiver is going to throw his ass by and he's going to get rolling. So we want to go from two right here. We got two on. Now take that left arm off and play ball on that upfield shoulder. Okay. Now here we're talking that outside leverage match three team, right? We got inside help, or if we're playing some type of one plus man defense, we're playing outside shoulder. Okay. Stepping with our left foot, kind of like I talked about, we're stepping to the receiver. Understand that if he does take the outside relief, we'll still win that. We'll be fine. Okay. Here's a different type of strike, right? Bang, we're in that armpit, thumbs up, boom. 220-pound receiver, put him down. Eyes are still down with playing ball. And these are just these are just release drills, right? This isn't one-on-ones or anything like that. Okay, it might be a little too far inside. But here's, here's, here's more strength right here. Again, thumb up, right? And we don't have to just ride this guy. Thumb up, now we're playing ball. Um, I mean, I got a lot of some of these guys, NFL clips, good, bad, and different. Obviously, a lot of times your guys' goals are to get to the league. Well, if they see league guys mess up or if they see league guys do good stuff, uh, they fall in love with it. So right here, we got some old school Niners stuff, Chris Culliver in this picture. Okay, I don't I don't like this initially just because he looks lax. Like there, there's, there's no focus. There's no lock in this to me in this picture. Okay, and what's going to happen from it? Yeah, you got Crabtree right here. Awesome. Okay, but what's going to happen from it is it's going to come back and he's got that same demeanor, right? Bang and see you. All right, lock your ass in and let's get going. So just the difference between the two there. A couple more, right? We got Cook here in this situation, just like our young 25 did, the, the young safety takes the step, bang, open. 
right? So everybody gonna do the stuff. You gotta get better, you gotta rep it, and it, it's gonna come with experience. If you see it from this angle, this receiver's trash bags too, okay? He's going step, open the gate like we talked about, common mishaps. Now let's get another look at him, right? Where you're getting a step and you're getting a step or place. He's playing it from the top down, obviously finish, uh, finish to the guy, but way better at the line of scrimmage right here. Alignment, pretty salty, like it. Here's your step, okay? Step or play, stay square. The hinge happens fast because you get a speed release. Awesome, whatever. Okay, play it from the top down. Bang, we're playing ball. So two completely looking, two completely different looking reps. Okay, same thing right here. You're getting a step, you're getting not a lot of confidence, and then you're getting an open. Done deal, right? Strike up the band. So if we look at it from the end zone, bang, step, go. It can't happen. And it all starts with confidence. Now we get the same kid here. Okay, he's going to play outside leverage on this one. Now you're getting step, stay square. Love it. Bang, two hands on, get to one, right? The At this point, the timing is done, right? There's not a quarterback in the country that's going to that's gonna make this throw. So it is, this essentially turned into a scramble drill just based on being good at the line of scrimmage. So pretty good right there as opposed to the last one. And again, the number one thing that you got to take care of if you're going to play outside leverage is the fade. Mandatory. Okay, we got uh, this kid's playing inside leverage, inside eye. So it, again, it's going to look like he's almost, almost head up here. You see the top of the numbers. He's pretty much splitting them, and that's where that receiver's uh, front foot is. So he's still going to step with his left foot. Okay, bang. Steps with his left. He gets the inside release. Now we got to be thinking inside route right now, mandatory. Inside route. Now what does he do? Receiver comes back, and he stacks them. So we already know what's coming. It's vertical. Just run, just run, just run. Okay? Um, I'm a firm believer, again, in just running. I don't like reaching. I don't like none of that. Run till you feel the receiver out, turn, look, go get the football. Okay, but if you see it from this picture here, a lot of the times you talk about, I, I love inside release fades. I, I think it's a, again, I think it's a hard ball for the for the offense to uh, complete. And I think that the timing is just 100% off. So right here, we're stepping, we get the inside release, eyes are down, right? We're thinking inside route, we might cut a gig right here. He tries to stack us and just run, bang, we're playing ball. So if you look at it from the jump, he goes from the top of the numbers. He's got to run around us to the divide, what I call the divider, splitting the hash in the numbers, to bang, 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 all the way out to the red line, what I call splitting the, the numbers in the sideline. Question here, Coach. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> do you guys run uh, two trap? Uh, we, we ran... It's not necessarily two trap, um, but it was a more of a bogus pressure. So we do run some some flat corner where where we will sit in there a little bit, but not a ton of it. No. Okay. Is there anything from that that there's somebody? Uh, he, he's saying if you do run two trap, if you could explain, if you could, if you do run it, could you explain it? Oh, okay. Yeah, we we can we can get on that after if if he wants to chop it up after we can we can we can definitely get on that. Cool. So here you go. You're getting again, inside leverage, damn near head up, challenging the receiver. Again, the receiver has to make a decision at the line of scrimmage right now. He has to. Bang. Inside release. We're thinking inside route. Right? We get no stack. He's just running. So this corner right here, he's top. And he needs to be top better. Obviously, yeah, we need to get going on this. We, we, we got to make these ones. Right? And he's competing on it. Awesome. But the more better that we get here, we're going to go make these things. And I think we made a few of them this year as well. But uh, we're talking about a group that had no no snaps coming into this season. So the progression this year should be crazy just based on experience. But I like it right here. He's sitting in there. He's pretty confident. Okay, eyes are down. Again, we don't have to get hands on if we get drastic releases. So drastic outside release or drastic inside release, we're just going to use our eyes and our feet. And then we're going to play ball. No stack, inside route, here we go. Let's go get it. And again, in these situations, we'd like him to take away this left arm and make him catch it Odell Beckham style with his, with his right hand here. You guys see some of that coming up too. 
So Cal Poly here. He kind of, he stepped into the receiver, inside release, inside route, right? He's playing his thing from the top down. Again, similar, take away that left arm. He gets his hand in there and knocks it out. But again, we want to take away, we want to take away that left arm because a lot of times the receiver is going to be bigger than this little dude and he's going to try to box you out. Okay, again, NFL film. Okay, before we get into some of, some of our game film, we'll watch some of this NFL stuff. So down here at the bottom, we got we got Richard Sherman down here when he was with the Hawks, right? He's working a step, activation step to open, done deal, right? And there goes Devontae Adams up the sideline. Doesn't, doesn't get it thrown to him, but this is a mishap right here. Okay, mishap as in open the gate. So we want to, again, try to stay square, make this guy run around us. So just like it happens to uh, my young guys, it happens to guys in the league as well. Uh, now we're talking Jaguar football, which I, I'm a big fan of Jalen Ramsey because he'll he'll do this shit against Julio Jones. He doesn't care who it is, DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins. I think right here he does it against Odell Beckham. But we're talking more. We're talking more this guy up top here against this X receiver. I want to say it's a safety as well, but does a great job. Okay? If you just look at it, he's got that activation step one. Okay, He gets the inside release. He's got to be thinking inside route right now. Okay, bang, there you go, done deal. Great job by him. Okay, so for us, if we're playing press here, here, and here, there won't be one guy that's giving ground. And if he's giving ground, that's a minus all the way through and through, right? So we're gonna sit in there, and again, if we take an L, we're gonna take an L throwing punches. Okay, we got my man down here again on this uh, on this tight end, Tyler Eifert down here. Okay, you got to understand the difference between a uh, tight end and a receiver. Understand the difference between releases, right? You're going to get more physicality out of a tight end than you would with a receiver. That's going to show a lot of the times more finesse. So you got to be ready to sit in there. You got to be ready to play on the balls of your feet or you will get put on your tail, okay, sitting in there at the line of scrimmage. Okay, so right here, I think this is Tony Jefferson down here at the bottom. He's playing flat, man. He's playing square. If you ever, even in catch, even in the post, a lot of times you catch square football players, you catch confident football players. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Okay, so he gets the diamond release route right, right here. The diamond release slant. Okay, again, he plays that outside arm, that left arm in this situation. Gets that ball out and he's talking nice. So pretty damn good job by, by Jefferson here. Football is confident football. Okay, last last NFL clip here down here at the bottom, right? You're gonna get your dude 25, and he's gonna show you the hop. So this is the hop that I'm talking about. I haven't seen it. Our guys do a ton of hopping, but there is uh, a lot of the times there's a lot of guys that like to hop, and that's what this guy does here. But he he still plays pretty confident. Okay, he hops, but he doesn't hop to open. The hop to open is is, is ugly football. He hops and he stays square, which puts him in a great position. To stay in front of this guy, okay, and if you can stay square that long, the route's going to be done. You're going to catch a lot of foul, foul balls. Okay. Um, so you need to see guys just, just, just his step against Sammy Watkins is, is a beautiful thing. It's artwork right here. Okay, down here at the bottom, bang step. And guess what? He catches a five-yard hitch. Awesome. Tackle him. We'll move to third and two. I'll get into some of, uh, some of our gang stuff. Okay, so, uh, again, across the board, we shouldn't be giving ground. And who knows? They might do it on this one. But we'll talk this X receiver down here, like seven up top. That's bad news. Before even any type of route gets in there or gets into it, I can tell you right now, seven, nah, that's a minus, buddy. The guy, in the, the nickel in the slot, that's good football. And this was a thing where we, we kind of schemed this one with the two-three split, understanding that they were going to do a, a lot of the switch releases. So he was expecting that. That's why they're not on different levels there. But good job by 34 in the slot. But down here at the bottom, again, we talked it. He ends up on his heels slightly, but inside release, okay, he gets two to one. Inside release, he's got the inside route, and again, we got to make it. Kind of like that one-on-one -on -one rep that we had. Um, but dig may be a, a hard route to guard, but if we play releases, we'll take away a lot of these. So nice job by that kid. Okay, same thing down here at the bottom. Okay, again, you catch a guy in the slot up top. 
right? He's not giving ground. He's playing flat. He's playing uh, lateral. Nice job by him. But down here at the bottom, this X receiver, again, we're we're not motoring out. We're not inching out, okay? Which I may teach if we get if we get good enough, if I feel we're good enough at, at this pier down the way, I may throw a little inch in there. But as of now, we're, we're all full speed ahead with the pier step. Okay, so right here, if we get out of there, this tackle is going to block us, and this thing's going to split the sheets, right? And it's going to be a parking lot tackle for this post safety to make. So um, us sitting in there being aggressive and, and getting on the guy's head, plays, plays homage in this scenario, turn three. Okay, my man up top, second and 10. Okay, you got to understand the difference between wins and losses. He does a good job staying pretty square. Okay, right here, second and 10, he catches that two yard out. That's a W. Okay, so can't get mad at your guys for, for balls that are just caught. If they're not caught in there, or if they're caught and they're not relevant, clap them off. Okay, up top. And we don't, again, we don't do a lot of pressing to the field. This kid here is pressing to the field. I don't know if it was based on situation or, or game plan or whatever it may be. To the top right here, this is what I'm talking about when we're talking to counter punch right here. He throws his left hand, and a good receiver is going to break his elbow right here and get vertical in a hurry. And this receiver is pretty salty at 1,400 yards. But we still need to get quicker and better at throwing that counter punch right now to open our hips back up. Down here at the bottom, this is a little bit what I talked about when I was talking to leverage. A lot of our leverage is, is inside eye, but down here at the bottom, we're going to play this thing slightly more inside because we know how far we are from the number two receiver and the end man line of scrimmage. So now here we know, again, inside release. We got to think inside route. We got to squeeze that. And bigger receiver, 6'4 receiver right here, he's going to try to box you out. But if we take away this left arm, okay, it's going to be a tough catch for him to make. Okay. Question here, question here for you, Coach. Yep. Uh, yep. I was just asked why uh, why don't you want to press to the field? That's a good question. So for me, I hate putting guys in stressful positions. I hate, and again, like I said, I teach a lot of things off of experience. If I was to press number 26 right here to the field right here against this this uh, Z receiver, um, he's going to be put in a stressful position, which means to me he's going to play heavy inside leverage because he's scared to get hit with a slant. Okay, And then when he plays heavy inside leverage, he's going to get a speed release. And now he's talking about 50-50 balls getting thrown on a fade. So that's what I mean by stressful positions. In this situation, he's playing off. I feel like by his alignment, Okay, um, him being seven yards and a yard to two yards inside based on the guy's split, I feel like he'll take care of the slant with that. And then him being off with the farthest throw in football, I feel like he'll be able to uh, rally back to the fade as well. So um, the answer to that is just to try to take guys out of stressful positions as much as possible. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, so talking. So again, like right here to the to the field. We'll play this thing slow as hell out. When we do play off, we play slow as hell out. We react to three-step. And if this ball is thrown to this hitch, that's a tough completion for these guys to make with that far of a throw. So that's, I guess that goes hand in hand with why we play off. Uh, up top, we're playing outside leverage in our, in our match three concept right here. Uh, so we end up, again, we can, we, can, we can take care of slants from outside leverage, I promise you. Here's your release. Okay, we get a good outside arm on this guy, bang. Now we're playing the slant just fine. So you got you got a hammer in those guys' heads because a lot of the times they, they get scared. Coach, I'm playing head up or I'm playing outside leverage. Coach, um, a slant will take to the house on me. Well, no, it won't if you play confident and you sit in there and you trust the technique, play ball. Okay, so right here we got a Cal Poly rep. Uh, this is down here in the red zone. And we could talk more more red zone. We talk high and tight red zone stuff. Um, but we were playing uh, we were playing this what we call bear red back in the day, um, where we got this low hole player right here with this safety. So we put this guy outside leverage. Um, and the number one thing that can't happen, obviously down here, is the fade, right? So we're playing outside leverage. We're stepping with our right foot in this scenario. 
Okay, we get an outside release. We got to own that thing. In this scenario, okay, we own it and we end up ending the game. Pretty good job by him. This is this is a pretty damn good teach tape right here. So he's stepping with his right. He's staying square, staying on the thing, looking through the receiver, which is what we talked about in the red zone, and making a play. Nice job by that kid. Third dog move. Practice, practice film on a red. Okay, I want to say we're just in. Uh, what are we in here? We're at one plus, so we are about to find boys on the back. Um, we're just talking my man at top. Uh, he does he does a decent job of of playing somewhat confident, right? But the reason why he partially opens is because he's not strong enough with his with his with his punch. That's what we talk about when we talk violence. But right? if you throw that stop sign out there like this, and you try to you try to punch somebody with a stop sign, it, it, it's not going to work, right? We got to put our our thumb up and we got to hit this guy in his peck with some violence and that's not only going to help us with where we are but it's going to help us uh, with our balance as well right right here is balance all thrown off receiver chops his arm down see you so the route that we should probably be jumping uh, the route that we should probably be jumping ends up being one that can be cut okay over here to the field this is this is a motor technique um okay, one, of, one of my mentors Todd me and Todd, some of these guys that we're, we're coaching right now, uh, the motor deal, which isn't bad, but again, when you motor out of there and you get into foot races like this, it is, it's not necessarily my speed. Okay, I don't, I don't like the losing when we're not when we're not competing. I'd rather this guy, I'd rather make this guy run all the way the hell around me and get into a victory lap before he goes and goes and gets the thing. It's too easy to me. You know, getting into some some game stuff, more game stuff. Okay, so down here to the bottom, one of our mastery concept right here. This receiver here is pretty damn good. Um, 1200 yard type guy. But this is our freshman, freshman corner, all American kid, freshman all American. There you go, playing confident. You, you, you can tell he's confident throwing through just on the first half a second of the clip. Bang, two hands, get one off. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about, playing routes from the top down. So if we look at this picture here, we're playing this thing from the top down, understand that we can take away the fade and we can react to everything downhill. So if he does run a curl, if he does run a, a comeback or whatever it may be, we'll react to that thing downhill. Now, what I'll do say in these scenarios, we're head up or we are, uh, or we're outside leverage. If we get outside release, understand that you're going to get three routes. You're going to get a comeback. A fade or a back shoulder. Done deal. All right, done deal. We'll react to everything else, but comeback, fade, back shoulder, that's what you're thinking. Now, can you get a diamond release slant, stuff like that? Yes, you can. But comeback, uh, fade, and a curve, or comeback, fade, and a back shoulder are the three things that we're thinking with this outside release with our leverage. Now, if you play, if you play heavy inside leverage, don't teach your kids that because a lot of the times heavy inside leverage are gonna take outside release for those. So that goes hand in hand with what the way that we teach it. So this kind of goes with uh, what we talked about pre-snap progression, right? Pre-snap progression right now, um, when we're talking formation, the first thing that we talked about, the formation, or the situation, I should say, and then the formation. Formation in this, this corner here, he's got to take a picture, right? Understand that in this scenario, it's 13P. We have the only vertical threat in our mind. Our post player, if this ball snapped and it's just straight drop back pass or it's play action pass, it's damn near be a double team. So we know that we have to win on the outside. It's mandatory. So we're going to go heavy outside. We're going to own this guy's outside shoulder and we're going to play ball here. Just taking a picture and understanding that we got all the help in the world inside of us. And we can talk about all that other shit that happened to the boundary here. Okay, let me move. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's talk about man up top. Little snap again. Uh, a lot of these guys are going to be a lot better just based on experience, based on on being getting the off season and Corona stuff kind of f us a little bit. But right here, he takes his activation step, and then you can tell he's not playing very confident right here because he's moving before the receiver declares. So he's taking his activation step, and then he's already moving his feet just based on the receiver chopping his feet. So this should just be a step and step replace 
when he declares, as opposed to get rolling. And this comes back to hunt. This comes back to hunt him uh, a couple plays later. Okay, down here at the bottom, we're talking outside leverage. Got to take away the fair inside release. We got to hug this right now. We got to hug it right now, and we got to be able to go make these. He gets in it and he and he competes, but we got to go make them. And he's pissed off at, at me and calls him outside leverage. No, we, we got to make them. I think he does right here. Right, same thing. He might go head up on this one, but he's stepping. He's pissed off. He strikes this guy in his chest, bow, and he comes back with the counter. And now RPO quarterback makes a uh, – I don't know if his decision is tough, but in this situation, he's probably hand his ball off, but he ends up keeping it and should be an interception at the end of the day. Nice job. Okay, this, this goes back to, again, pre-snap progression. Okay, understanding our call. Um, we got a, we got a post safety right here, and Montana did a good job here, going from one formation to the other, shift, shift to mo. Um, but we got to be outside leverage over here, especially with a post player, especially with that nasty split, that cut split by that X receiver. Um, and I take this one on the head. This is a confidence. He's heavy inside. We got to go make this play. But it starts with our alignment first and foremost. It does, because our post safety's got to be able to make a play on any type of slant down here in the red zone. Uh, especially with these cut speeds. So, and if we were to talk red zone man and stuff like that, as soon as we still just got fading away, as soon as we feel those shoulders open up, we got to attack these guys' chest. And he does, a, he does a good job trying to punch late. But if we can win at the line of scrimmage, start with our alignment, this, this play is good. Like talking down here, you dub. Uh, this kid goes outside leverage again, taking a picture of it. Uh, he's got to understand that this kid is, is probably uh, a full second faster than him. But the fact that he plays confidence, sits in there, um, makes this guy go around him, you can still win. As long as you play confident, you can still win. Just run, just run, just run. I wanted to show you guys what I was talking about, some some gang reps on, on inside releases, right? Inside release fades and what guys don't practice. Now, not a great job by, by the boundary corner here. Not a great job with his hands. I understand this guy's still in his – he's still right there in our framework, so we should be able to punch this guy, and no question about it. But the fact that we get this guy to do inside release as opposed to outside release, the quarterback's not ready to make that throw a lot of the time because this is all based on timing, right? So in this scenario, we get them to throw a foul ball and they try to come back to it and we actually do a better job on the second time around. You got coach. Yeah, I got a couple questions here, Coach. First one, uh, anything you teach with, with back shoulder, whether terminology or buzzwords? Yeah, so, so, so back shoulders a lot of times is a, is a game plan deal. Um, a lot of the times it is something that a team has their masters in. Um, so when we're playing against back shoulder teams, obviously we'll rep that during the week, but I teach open shoulders, closed shoulders. So open shoulders, meaning my shoulders are going straight ahead. Op uh, closed shoulders, I should say. Closed shoulders are my shoulders going straight ahead, and I'm running the fade, and I'm looking to catch the ball over the top. Now, when I see shoulders open up, that's when I'm looking to play through the chest and then get through the hands. So, again, it has to do – more and more with, and I got, I actually got a good amount of reps because North Dakota was a big time back shoulder team, but uh, it has to do more than anything with the release and understanding that you're over the top of the route. A lot of times when you're over the top of the route, which is what, what I preach, playing things from the top down, you're going to be able to see is this guy's shoulders open to the quarterback or are they closed where he's running and catching that thing over the top. And uh, when do you play off in the red zone and in catch? What's your depth? Well, in the red zone, uh, obviously it's depending on the call. Um, we will play press to the boundary all day. If we're playing cover zero, it'll be more of a sticks deal. They say it's third and seven. I'll align those guys at seven yards and play catch from there. Um, to the field, we'll, we'll keep it the same. I actually got a few clips on that too. Actually, if we went back to that Cal Poly clip, there's a there's a kid playing that thing to the to the field off. 
Um, but we won't play a ton of off to the boundary ever. 95% of the time we're going to play press and we're going to challenge guys. But uh, with that, uh, you got to be able to play some press bail. You got to be able to blitz that corner. You got to be able to play some cover two stuff, trap that corner a little bit. So um, that's that's the way that I see that boundary corner taking some stress off of him. He's not always going to be in man, right? We're going to blitz his ass sometimes. We're going to bill him sometimes. That's more game plan deal. Um, and then we're going to we're going to trap him sometimes too. So we'll do some press bail and throw him in the flat as well. So um, more of a game plan situation. But red zone wise, we'll play we'll play red zone very similar to the way that we play middle of the field, the technique just changes. We don't play things from the top down. We play things from the low hip and make and or not make, but we use that, uh, that back, that back line as another defender. Uh, any press bail technique tips? Um, so the way that we press bail, we press bail outside leverage. And I look through the court. I look through to the quarterback um, with that number one receiver in our peripherals. So when we're bailing, I don't want to just have eyes on the man. I want to look at the quarterback and have number one receiver in our peripheral. So a lot of the times um, when, you, when you study it, you're bailing. You're bailing from outside leverage. If he's running a fade, he'll try to get to your blind spot. If he's running some type of inside route, he'll stay vertical, and then he'll run a, a slant or he'll run a post or he'll run a, a hitch or whatever it may be. But getting the key – of the quarterback as well as the peripheral key of the receiver, I think gives you then gives you an advantage um, when you're press bailing. And a lot of the times, I don't like to press bail just straight from the line of scrimmage. I like to get out of there a little bit on cadence. So when we press bail, a lot of the times we will um, go tight, tight. We'll shuffle, shuffle to a crossover run. So that shuffle, shuffle is essentially like a slow out when you're playing uh, when you're playing off man. So we'll, we'll shuffle, shuffle through the three-step window. I don't know if that answers the, my man's question. Okay, so that was an inside release fade. Um, so here to the boundary again, you're going to get another inside release where outside leverage might be a little too far. Outside leverage is fine. Okay, step is a little too tight. But again, inside release, he tries to stack this, right? Inside release, we're thinking inside route until we get that. Now, at that point, we'll just play the outside shoulder, okay? We'll just run, just run, just run. And, again, make this guy, at the end of the day, make him catch the ball like this. Make him catch it with his right hand in this picture without his left arm, and that's a, that's, we call those Odell catches. If you got an Odell catch, you will clap him off. Nice job. You deserve to the lead. Okay, a lot of times our post player will make this play as well. But, again, very similar up top, like we talked about with that, that, that corner up top. We're playing match three right here, and I think we are, you know, we're playing. We're just playing man, we're bringing five here. Um, but in this scenario up top, when we're talking the slow technique of it, you slow out, be ready to drive. There you go, you're playing ball. Same thing we would do in the red zone. Okay, so right here, down here at the bottom, not great technique. But it's, he's stepping with the wrong foot, okay? All that, but again, inside release. We get this guy trying to stack us. We'll play the outside shoulder, and a lot of times, if your post player is good enough, if he's rangy enough, he does a good job keying that quarterback playing off that back foot. You'll get this guy to make some plays. So the inside release fade, man, you cannot get mad at that. You can't get mad at it with this technique. That is okay. Got a couple more clips here. Talking the corner up top here. Corner up top. Oops. So right here, talking this corner up top. This is this is what I call communism. This is bad ball. Okay, he's getting out of there. That's 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 not what I'm looking for. All right, we're looking to sit in there. We're looking to play confident, and we're looking to compete on this route. He gets lucky. Second and six, right here. He gets lucky, and his guy doesn't catch it. But that's not what we're looking for. Now, if we go. I don't want to say it's the next series. If we're we're continuing to play ball here and talk to him on the sideline, stuff like that, whole different, whole different deal. Okay, he puts his foot in the ground, he's playing confident. Okay, bang, he gets hands on, right? And you can make plays on slants, guys. I promise you. You can make plays on slants. So the difference between those two reps is, is, is big time. One guy, one time he's playing confident, one time he's playing scared. And that's why I preach day in and day out, we have to play confident, man. Have to. 
Questions? All right, so that's, that's all I got clip-wise. Um, if there's any more questions or anything like that, again, like I said, uh, we can talk ball. We can talk ball outside of the uh, outside of this deal. And my email and my Twitter will be put up right here. So good to go. There's a question here, Coach. Uh, any good DB drills or work that players can do now with with the social distancing? Uh, yeah, I try to keep it. I try to keep it fairly light. I think I got some stuff in here somewhere. Let me see. I think some of this change of direction stuff. Uh, just taking it from the top down. Obviously, you'd like to flip your hips and and do all of that stuff, but just playing the stuff from the top down. I just got guys working on planting, pointing, accelerating out of their breaks, right? And this is this is just top of the route stuff. Okay, once you go from this, you can turn this thing into a back pedal. Let's see, it's probably on here. Or I think it went 90 degrees. So we went from, and, and I call it about 85 because we want to cut this thing a little short, but we were working all the top of these top of these breaks here. And then you turn it into a transitional deal where you're getting guys either coming from an open position or you're getting guys, and I think they go 135 to the down the line and all that stuff. But you're getting guys where they're in a build position, they're in a back pedal. Um, I think I think this is it right here, right? They go from that top of the route stuff to actually bang and then foot in the ground, right? So I think just the little things. I don't think you send your guys some over the top where they're going to teach you. They're going to start working on bad habits and stuff like that. I think if you can send them the most simple type stuff, I think you give them a chance to, um, at minimum, maintain. That's 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 what I'm trying to do is at minimum maintain. And I send these guys a lot of stuff where uh, I'll send them the clips and I'll kind of talk through them as, as I'm giving them culture points and stuff with the video. So. Uh, when your guys press, are they supposed to always get hands on? Not always. No, nope, not always. Um, I, I wish it was that way. Um, and that's, that's kind of the mentality piece of it is we would love to get hands on. But again, you're going to get receivers with, with the technique that we do. You're going to get receivers that try to run around the hoop, okay, to get to where they need to be. So they're going to run five yards off their landmark because you're just sitting there. Now, when you're getting out of there, their receivers are confident it's all out when you're giving ground, right? Okay, I'm going to step on this guy's toes and I'm going to play ball. But when you're sitting there, you know that they got to make a decision right now. So uh, I preach eyes and feet before anything. Once you're good with your eyes and feet, now we can use our hands. So would love to get hands on, but if they're not in our base, Let's just use the eyes and feet and play ball. Uh, and when they do get hands on, do you prefer one, one or two? Uh, so with, if they're within our framework, dead to dead, or what I call dick to dick, if they're within our framework, we can get two hands on. But as soon as they declare, it's going to go to one right now. So if he declares right or he de declares left, I'm either coming like this or I'm coming like this. So I teach, I teach two, one, none, two hands, one hand, no hands. Um, in regards to to tackling, are you guys doing uh, using tackling circuits? Are you using a tackling system? Uh, what do you guys do there? Yeah, yeah. So so tackling, um, we actually have a tackling coach. I'm, I'm actually the tackling coach. I think I got some stuff on here too. But we do it. We do a ton of a ton of circuits, a ton of circuits, and um, we 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 hound on being a shoulder leverage tackling team we, we we live by that we're a shoulder leverage tackling team which means um if the ball carries over here i'm going to be right shoulder if the ball carries over here i'm going to be left shoulder and i'm going to keep i'm going to keep my uh keep my shoulder leverage wherever whatever the hell happens doesn't matter i may have a couple tackling drills on here uh, let's see All right wrap and roll let me see angle tackling stuff like that um yeah so we're more we're more angles than than anything else we're more keeping our leverage and every tackle obviously is not going to be the most violent tackle in the world but we do want guys to go backwards right we want we want guys to go backwards and 
I don't teach if if you get ran over. This is this is this is that. Right. On contact, I want a guy to go the other way. So let me see. I guess I probably got some true tackling stuff on here too. What I gather. Big thing for us is is going to be is going to be running your feet. That was one of the big big emphasis that we had coming coming out of the season. We weren't we, like right here. This isn't this isn't running your feet. This is coming off of both feet. We want to see guys attacking this bag, attacking this donut right here. And literally, as he comes out of the air, it should look like he's running in air. It should look like he's running in the air. So right here, he's leaving his feet. Okay, and a lot of the times you may make that tackle, but the chances are if you're running your feet, you're gonna have a higher percentage of getting that guy down. Okay, we got we got a million tackling clips, and right here this is this is probably the best one to actually show that you can run your feet. Um, you got anything else, Coach G? It was just asked if on, on, on this one, Coach, if you could just uh, make the screen a little uh, screen bigger. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and what do you call that drill, the one where you're running the feet? This one? Yes. This is, we call this double tap. So double tap. Double, yep, double tap. We're, we're running our feet, and we're not trying to just lift this guy up, but we're trying to run this guy into the ground, and we want to land on him as well, right? So these are situations where you're going to play head up football, you're in the hole, and you're closer you're closer uh, relationship-wise to the ball carrier, right? When you're talking about distance, a lot of times, um, you're going to get into a wrap and roll tackle as opposed to a double tap. So I think, let me see, I think I had to show, yeah, I had to show one in here, just running your feet, getting them going. I think the next guy may do it pretty well. There you go, just running them feet, harp on it, harp on it, harp on it. Obviously, the wrap piece of it and the, and we, we talk a lot about shoulder punches too, so. Yes, sir. Uh, does anybody else have any uh, last minute questions for coach? Obviously he had posted his um, contact information, his Twitter handle, email. Um, you can also find it on the pinned tweet that I put out before. If you guys want to reach out to him, shoot him a DM. If you have any questions, talk ball, scheme, you know, covered stuff, whatever. Um, but I want to thank all the coaches for, for jumping in here, man. And, uh, you know, spending uh, not only this session with us, but a bunch of you guys have been in uh, since the morning, since the 9 a.m. one. So can't thank you guys enough for your dedication and, and uh, you know, continually wanting to improve, um, you know, your skill set and your knowledge of the game and learn something new. So it was great. And obviously, uh, big shout out to Coach Brown, man, for taking the time out to, to uh, you know, present this um, and, and be willing to share his contact information. And, and once again, guys, use this opportunity when, when the coaches are, uh, have a little more time on their hands because when when it's back, man, it's back and guys ain't gonna have as much time. So um dudes are more than willing to talk ball and, and bounce ideas off each other. So definitely take advantage. So coach, I appreciate you man and uh yeah all day man great, all day great, great session and a lot of a lot of really useful information. Um it was awesome. Definitely awesome. Yep. Appreciate it man. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Guys thank you so much. Um we'll be back at it tomorrow morning. Hope everyone has a, a great evening. Stay safe. Um, and you know, till, till then, man, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Once again, coach, thank you. Yes, sir.